In this tutorial, we'll cover image sprites, canvas, if statements, and collision detection to make a mini golf app. So start at the Drake App Camp website and click on App Camp Part 3. Scroll down till you find the mini golf section and download this obstacle.png file to your desktop. Then click on the App Inventor homepage, click on the orange Create button, and we'll create a new project, call it Mini Golf. Great. From here, we'll have our screen component. Again, I don't want screen one to be shown, so let's change that title to be Mini Golf. Everything else is pretty good as it stands. I'm going to click on the drawing animation drawer, bring out a canvas. This will be the backdrop for our Mini Golf. So I'm going to rename that and call that the putting canvas instead. I'll make the background color, instead of that being white, let's change that to a nice green color and change the width to be the fill parent and the height can be something like 350 works well for my emulated phone. Great. So then let's drag out a ball for the golf ball. Uh, change that, of course, to be the golf ball. That color should be white. And let's make the radius, say, 10 pixels. And the other thing I'm going to change here is the Z component. I'm actually going to make that two for a reason I'll describe in a, in a moment. Um, so we got a golf ball. We also need a hole. Now we're actually going to use a ball object here for the hole as well. Um, it's just basically a circle. So we'll rename this guy to be the hole. And we will change its radius to be bigger than the golf ball and leave its Z dimension to be one. So the reason that the golf ball has a Z dimension of two is that if whatever has the higher Z dimension will be on top when these things overlap. So this will allow the ball to be over the hole like so. That's great. Um, one other thing while we're here, we'll drag an image sprite out and this is going to be our obstacle. So rename that to be an obstacle and I'm going to upload that obstacle file that I put on my desktop and allow that to be the picture for that particular image sprite. All right, good shape. Now click on the user interface drawer. We're going to drag out a couple of components here. The first is the button. Let's rename that to the reset button and change the text to be simply reset. And then one last thing we're going to drag out here is a clock. Call this the timer clock. By default, the timer interval is a thousand milliseconds. That's one every second. We're going to use this timer to slow the golf ball down. So let's change that to just to be 100 milliseconds for every one tenth of a second this timer clock is going to fire. All right, so that's the basic look and feel for the mini golf app. Now go ahead and click on connect and connect this to your phone. Okay, from here, click on the blocks button to open up the blocks editor. The first thing we want to do is allow the user to essentially fling the golf ball and put it, the golf ball in motion in a particular direction. So click the golf ball object here and drag out the when golf ball dot flung event handler. Notice there are six different arguments here. We're particularly interested in this case in the heading and the speed. We want the heading of the ball to be to match the golf ball golf ball's flung gesture. So we're going to click on the golf ball again and set its heading to match the heading of that flung gesture. So we'll go ahead and mouse over that heading and plug it in to look like this. We're also going to do something with the speed as well. We want a, the golf ball speed to match the speed of that fling gesture. And so I can do a similar thing like this. This, however, is not going to give me a very satisfying speed for the ball. I need to multiply this by a particular number. So under math, I'm going to bring out the, the multiplication sign and I'm going to multiply the speed, in this case, by seven. That works pretty well for my emulator. If you might have a different number here that'll work better for your particular device. Okay, so that'll, that'll work pretty well. The problem with this, however, is that it's never going to stop the ball. 
So I'm going to use that timer clock now to basically slow the ball down after it's initially been flung. So remember that the timer clock is, is firing every tenth of a second. And the trick here is I'm gonna to check to see if that ball speed is still greater than say 0.5. If that's true, I'm going to slow the ball down a little bit. So I'm going to compare, I'm going to bring a greater than symbol out here. I'm going to get the ball speed. So get the ball speed and see if it's greater than say 0.5. If that's true, then I'm going to set the ball speed to be a little bit slower. So click out the set golf ball speed, plug that in here, and I'm going to subtract a small amount off of the current ball speed. So I'm gonna click that and just copy and paste it. Take the current golf speed and actually let's use 0.5 there again. So we're going to take the current speed, subtract five, and let that be the new golf speed. I'm not quite done yet because if it's not the case that it, the golf speed is greater than 0.5, then it's pretty slow. It's like 0.4 or 0.3, but I want it to stop. So I'm going to click on this gear here and add an else clause to that if then statement. So if this is not true, then I want code here to execute. I'm going to copy and paste that entire block. Instead of having the subtraction operation here, I want the golf ball speed in this case to stop. So I'm gonna go just pull out a zero. Great. So now if I fling the golf ball, oh, that wasn't a very good fling, but you get the idea. It'll go for a little bit and then eventually stop. Okay, good. So the next thing to do is make sure the ball can bounce off of the side of the app. So I'm going to under the golf ball again, find the when edge reached block and drag that down. And golf ball again, it's really pretty easy to make it bounce off of an edge. I'm just going to call this block golf ball dot bounce off of this particular edge argument. That's all there is to it. So now I should be able to fling the golf ball and have it bounce off of the edges. Great. Couple other things I wanna add. I wanna be able to bounce off of this particular obstacle. So in this case, that's gonna be really simple to do. Click on the obstacle object here and find the when collided, collided with block. So when the obstacle collides with something, in this case, it's going to be the ball. All I want to do is change the ball's heading. I'm going to set the heading to be updated. In this case, I basically want the heading to be the opposite of what it currently is, the, the negative value of what it currently is. And the easiest way to do that is to go under the math block, math drawer, and change this to be zero, the value of zero, minus the current golf ball heading. like so. Now I should be able to have the ball bounce off of the obstacle. Great. One last thing to add to the app is to detect when the golf ball actually has collided with the hole. So under golf ball, we'll find the collided with block. So the very top one here. I want to check to see if the golf ball has in fact collided with that particular hole. Notice there's this other argument here. I want to check to see if that other in fact is the hole and not something else like an edge or the obstacle. So I'm going to check to see if that other object in fact is equal to the hole. So I'll get the other and if I go down to the hole object and scroll all the way to the bottom, I can get this piece that looks just like that. So if in fact the golf ball collided with this other thing, this other argument, and that other argument is in fact the hole, let's stop the golf ball. So the golf ball speed should be set to zero. So set the golf ball speed 
right, make sure that that is equal to zero. The other thing that might kind of add a nice uh, touch is to put the golf ball, in fact, directly onto the hole. So let's set the golf ball's X and Y position to match the hole's X and Y position. So this can be done simply by um, setting the golf ball's X position. And I'm going to copy this and paste it to save a little bit of time here and change the second guy's position to be the Y. So set the X and the Y position to be the hole's X and Y position. So I can go ahead and get the hole's X position like so. And similarly, copy and paste to be the Y position. It's not going to match exactly because the hole is bigger than the golf ball and the X and Y positions are the upper left hand corner. But you can see that it'll kind of give the same, that the approach, the, 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 the look that I want to have happen. So if the golf ball were actually to, let's see if we can try to bounce it off of the obstacle into the hole. There it goes. So you can adjust the values here a little bit if you want to make it look appropriate. Similarly, you can change the reset button and change it so that the golf ball's position gets moved somewhere else. Again, kind of similarly setting the X and the Y position to be maybe a random spot on the screen. There's lots of other modifications that you can do to this app. You can keep track of the number of strokes. You can uh, change the position of the obstacle. You can uh, make, it, make it customizable, make it so you could have uh, lots of different levels, for example. So have fun making your own version of the mini golf app.